as people become less connected to the natural world, we're going to have to tell the story of our wildlife, but we're going to have to be able to tell it in a way that is meaningful to all. I knew at a very early age that going into to wildlife management was something that I wanted to pursue. We're advocates for, for things that don't have a voice. Prior to European establishment, elk in North America were really distributed throughout the United States. As settlement expanded, those numbers began to decline. They were essentially removed from the state. It was through the Nevada Department of Wildlife and a lot of dedicated conservationists that we saw those numbers start to improve. And here we are today with a very bountiful population. Aerial surveys are really critical to the work that we do here. It gives us a better perspective of the health and numbers of the populations that we manage. GIS technology has proved to be very valuable in the way that we conduct operations. Humans have impacted the landscape. We can't turn back the clock. So how can we best manage for what we have today? Being able to take that step back and visualize your information, seeing those trends across the landscape, that's when you start to be able to make some really powerful decisions. Data is just the backbone of all of it. We have to be able to see the entire picture. We need to be able to know all of the features across the landscape that could potentially influence our populations. The first thing we do before we go out and fly is we set up a survey event into Survey123. Things like who's flying in the aircraft, what are the weather conditions, and then most importantly is what are the species that we're gonna be targeting on that flight. Once we've entered the appropriate information, we can then queue up quick capture. Traditionally, we would take a handheld GPS device and handwritten notes. We're now able to use a tablet. We've essentially completely condensed the process of manually transcribing notes and referencing that to GPS waypoints. Today, we saw a lot of elk well above elevation bands that you would see in a typical winter where we had adequate snow coverage because of this ongoing drought we've been experiencing. I also expect the number of calves will probably be a little bit lower, so it's definitely playing a part in the distribution of animals. At the conclusion of our flight, we can hit submit on our survey and we're automatically pushing all of the data that was collected, flight paths, group observations, audio recordings to the ArcGIS server for immediate and real-time review by both our biologists and our staff. The process of transcribing information, what used to take several months, we now have at the conclusion of the survey. It allows biologists more time to be biologists and not data managers. In ArcGIS Online, we see blue lines that represent the route that the helicopter took during the flight. The dashboard is really important because this provides a summary of the number of animals that we encountered. We can use the GIS tools to review things like mining operations. These operations are often built in places right in the middle of critical migration corridors. We can also look at various disturbances on the landscape, including wildfires and habitat treatments. In some instances, we're classifying over 10,000 animals in certain areas. 30 years ago, the ability to quickly display survey data on a computer would be unheard of. Here we are being able to make real-time decisions and, and have real-time understanding of some of our populations, and that's just helping us make quicker decisions about how we want to manage wildlife and, and the things that we want to do on the landscape to improve their status. I feel like now that we are more involved with not just the field work, but also the higher level decisions that are being made that can really kind of decide the fate of some of these species. In addition to our department making more informed decisions, they're going to be able to make better recommendations because they'll have more data at their fingertips. All of these things in the grand scheme of wildlife, I think that they're continually faced with growing pressures but it's the winds that we can secure to help perpetuate those, those species and populations into the future. That's, that's really what keeps me going.
I have a passion for wildlife and I'm here to protect and preserve them and ensure that not just current generations have an opportunity to enjoy their presence and to know that they exist, but that our future generations do as well. <laughs>